previously on The Drawing Dead. Okay, good deal. We split that long blog into two. Now let's enjoy the second half. session update now over, and I return to the table and decide to straddle under the gun rather than posting a dead $5. Hands are dealt and I peek down at pocket nines. Action folds to the button who opens for $60, and I find the call. Two of us see a flop of Jack Deuce 7 Rainbow, and I check over to the pre-flop razor, and he continues for $40. I quickly call because on this flop, there's still a ton of c-betting hands that I'm ahead of with pocket nines. However, the turn queen of diamonds isn't my favorite. At all. This isn't a good card for me, and when I check here he fires $150 into the middle. Sometimes, you just have to let hands go. I fold. Here the button has opened for $30 and for some reason I've decided to make a horrible call with King-9 offsuit from the small blind and the big blind tags along as well. Yes, it's horrible. Bad, bad. But let's not talk about how bad my call is, let's just continue with the hand, okay? The queen deuce 10 board gets checked through which allows me to see a beautiful jack peel off on the turn. No reason for me to continue checking now, after the flop has checked through, so I lead for $40 and only get called by the big blind. The river three of diamonds changes nothing and I continue for $120 on this street. The big blind thinks about it for a few seconds, makes the call, sees the bad news, and mocks. Sometimes, you start feeling yourself a bit too much and get out of line flatting under the gun opens with 8-5 suited for $30. To make it worse, the small blind comes along and the three of you see the king-queen-nine board of death and the under the gun opener bet $70 when it's checked to them. It's times like these when you realize that you just gave away 30 hard-earned dollars. Then there are times like this one. The middle position player opens to $30, the cutoff calls, the small blind calls, and I call as well with the pocket nines again. This time, however, the flop comes all under cards in 3-5-3. Three, three. Small blind checks, I stay in flow and check, and the original razor continues for $60. This bet sheds the cutoff in small blind, but I obviously am not folding here. The turn brings the deuce of diamonds and I donk lead for $100. Probably half confused and half curious by my sudden lead, the original razor makes the call. The seven of clubs brings in the front door flush, and I check. The original razor follows suit and checks behind. I expose my hand and get the pleasure of scooping in a pot with pocket nines, this time. This next hand was unfortunate. Not unfortunate because I lost it, sorry, spoiler, but more unfortunate because I lost about four times more than I should have lost. So here's what happened. I'm not a big fan of calling people aquatic sounding names, so we'll just call this villain in this hand an action player. He opens for $30 and I make a pretty standard three bet from the button to $90 with ace four of clubs. When the action returns back to the whale, the action player, he 4-bets to $250. Now, I'm normally down for a good 4-bet, but the problem here is, well, my hand kind of sucks. 
the way this should play out is me pitching my cards, tapping the table a couple times, and saying, good one, to the villain. Well, I'm sure you can deduce that that doesn't happen, because if it did, it probably wouldn't, quote, make the vlog, unquote. So yes, I called, unfortunately. Heads up and in position, we see a flop of ace, nine, six with one club. The villain now leads out for $180, and now I'm in a must-call situation. I call. The turn is my saving grace. It's the seven of diamonds, but more importantly, it's not a club. Our villain shows no signs of slowing down and drops $320 into the middle. It's at this point I come to my senses. It's not very often you see a player for bet, then bet, bet on an ace-high non-flushing board in a live game without holding an ace. It happens, sure, but I don't think it's happening here. So I let this one go. I let it go two streets too late, but I was even happier I let it go when he flashes ace of hearts, king of clubs my way. about it for a while I decided the game was just too tight just too tight and I say that and literally the hand back from the mid-session update I don't know I lost like $400 with ace four clubs so be it we're out and for 15 out for 22.92 so you know on to the next one Maybe there's better pastures elsewhere. So we're going to um, see if we can find those better pastures. So the night's not over. We're just not gonna stay at the Bellagio. Fifteen minutes later, we have arrived. The Encore. I told you the night wasn't over. I told you. You'll believe me one of these days. When I tell you the night ain't over, the night ain't over.
Obviously, I'm at the wind poker room at the Encore now. I know. It's confusing, isn't it? Anyway, that's where we are, and things are going quite well. Haven't run into any tricky spots, the table was lively and fun, and I'm up maybe a couple hundred dollars. I'm showing this hand because this basically illustrates the mood I was in. The button has straddled and I look down at King 7 suited in middle position. This warrants an open, so I do just that by making it $30 from the hijack. However, the cutoff and button aren't dissuaded at all, and both find calls. The flop is decent for me as it comes Jack 4-7 with one heart. Feeling as if my hand was pretty vulnerable on this board, I see bet for $50 and they both quickly folded. I wish all hands were this easy. Not too long after that hand with King 7 of hearts, I stumbled into this one. In actuality, the entire session at the Encore was only about 3 hours long, so none of these hands are very far apart. Here, early position decides to limp and the hijack bumps it up to $30. I look down at two red 7s from the cutoff and make the call. The button behind me calls, the small blind behind him comes along, and the middle position open limper also joins the fray. 17 of us see the flop of 9 of clubs, 7 of spades, 4 of diamonds. In my book, this isn't a bad flop for two red sevens. Action begins with two checks and then the hijack pots it for $150. That's a pretty large bet into this raggedy board with 18 players in this hand and no real apparent draws on board. His bet sizing kind of alarmed me. Not in a, I'm going to fold sort of way, but in a, what the hell sort of way. I'm the only combatant who chooses to make this call. The turn brings the king of spades and now the hijack slows down, way down, and he finds a check. With about $450 in the pot, I bet less than half, 185. The hijack picks up his cards to fold, stops himself, grabs raising chips, puts those chips down and goes deep into the tank. Deep, deep into the tank. After what felt like four minutes, but was actually 47 seconds, he slides his cards into the muck. In orbit later, I pick up the sevens again. Under the gun opens for $15, I call next to act, and the cutoff comes along. I wish I could tell you what the flop is, but um, I really don't know. It's not in my notes. I can tell you that action gets checked to the cutoff, and he bets $40 and wins the pot. But unfortunately... All I know about the flop is, it didn't contain a 7. This game, man. Sometimes things go easily, and other times, it's like you're dodging landmines. Under the gun, I look down at the biggie, to all the ladies in the place with style and, grace. and open to $20. Bear with me as I get this next part right. Next to act calls $20, next to act calls $20, next to act folds, next to act calls $20, next to act calls $20, and finally, next to act calls $20. Did you get that? Five callers. Oh boy. So, a large portion of the table sees this 10 high flop. 10 of spades, 9 of clubs, deuce of hearts. In the small and big blind, check to me. Normally you'd feel good with a flop like this. Against five other players though, not so much. I'm still most likely in the lead, but sets lurking about are always a thing. I bet $75 and only get calls from the hijack and button. I shed the other half of the field. The turn isn't my favorite, as in... I hate it. A lot. It's the ace of hearts. I check and alert my brain that decision time will soon be upon us. However, it gets checked through. The river? Well, the river I do like. It's the ace of diamonds. So now I feel a bit more confident that I may still have the best hand. I tell my brain it can go back to resting as I know I'm just checking and calling reasonable bets here. However, my check is met with no resistance and the river gets checked through as well. I win. You know, you know. In the distance, the sun's coming up. Everything is blurry, the trees flashing by my side. My side. We're far ahead. The horizon never seems so close. The sky is red. We're not out of the woods yet, you know. Don't stop. 
This next hand, okay, yeah, I get a bit out of line. I think I have an unhealthy attraction to small gapped diamond cards. They're just so cute. Anyway, Undergun opens to $20 and I reach deep into my range and find a call with deuce five of diamonds. I told you it was out of line. Everyone folds and we see the flop heads up. Deuce of hearts, deuce of clubs, nine of hearts. Under the gun continues by c-betting for $25. Instantly I think, uh oh, I'm about to lose a subscriber. As I raise to $65, he takes almost no time with it and makes the call. The turn brings the four of hearts and he doesn't slow down. He now bets $100 directly into me. If he has a flush, he's just going to get paid. But on the bright side, I won't lose a subscriber. I call. The river seven of spades must have changed something because now the under the gun player finds a check. This is the green light I needed to fire $125 into the pot. He called so quickly that I thought I must have lost. However, when I exposed my hand, he sighed and mucked his. This isn't going to be good for the YouTube algorithm. Mid-session update, encore style. <clears throat> so what is going on in this game? 2-5, no limit, 1500 cap. <sighs> Current status is, I'm up. I'm up something. I was up more before I picked up kings. Oh yeah, the king's hand. You know those hands that you play where every part of your being is telling you, dude, just fold. And then you don't fold, and then after their hand, you're like, I'm dumb. That was an easy fold. Well, this is one of those. The hand starts off simple enough. Under the gun opens to $15, middle position player and cutoff call, and I look down at kings on the button. Dream scenario. We make it $95, and although that sheds the cutoff, the under the gun and middle position player come along. Right away. I knew there were problems. The Queen Jack 9 flop is horrid. It really smacks the other two players hard. When they check, I check behind. Let's see a decent turn card. I don't see a decent turn card. The turn card is another queen. Things just went from bad to worse. The under the gun player now leads for $125. Here's where the voices in my head are starting to question my life's choices. One side of my head was screaming, just fold. The other side of my head was screaming, don't be an idiot. He's on a draw. Eventually, I settled on a call because he kept the bet small. If things went from bad to worse on the turn, they went from bad to worse to worser on the river. In ace. Now the under the gun player tanks for quite a while before betting $265. <sighs> the he's on a draw voices are silent and my head is ringing with just fold, just fold. What are you thinking about? Just fold. So of course I call and he shows me 10 eight of clubs for a flop straight. I'm an idiot. And ran into 10 8 of clubs. But I'm still up. The game is still good. And it looks like it might have just gotten better. Two new additions to the table look very gambly. And that's what we want to see. The problem is, it's getting a little late. Because, you know, it's me and it's always getting a little late. And I don't know how much gas I have in the tank. <sighs> but we're going to try to hang in there. Maybe another hour, maybe two. Let's see how gambly these new players are. Then after that, wrap up, go home, sleep, edit.
so that is it. We are done. It is bedtime. Um, interestingly enough, after the mid-session update, or whatever you want to call that update I did 15 minutes ago, I don't think I played another hand. I took a glance at the time, saw it was 12.30, 1 o'clock. No, I have to get up at 6. So session results in that game for 1500 out for 2030. So if I'm doing my math correctly, it's up $530. I will take it. I will take any of the positives. So as always, if you like the blogs, like, subscribe, follow, thumbs up, leave me pretty emojis, but leave me a comment and I'll probably respond. And uh, until next time. Talk to you later. Bye. We in Vegas now, huh? I reckon we about to have a good time. button behind me calls the small blind behind him comes along in the middle <clears throat> the button behind me calls in the button behind me calls the small blind behind him comes along in the middle position player open oh, blah 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 not bad not a bad day not a bad day today up about but for this second miss session but for this second miss session update we're going to try to extend it we're going to push it but the problem is it's getting a little late and you know me, but the problem is it's getting a little, um, and that's it. Let's wrap this thing up. If you uh, like the vlogs, subscribe, leave me a comment and uh, I'll probably respond and I don't know, something else I'm forgetting.